to brief you directly on the current situation in the country and in particular on the protests and in some areas the violent violence and disorder that we've witnessed. This is important because of the level of misinformation that has flourished on social media and other sources about the challenges we face and the genuine efforts made by the federal government to deliver and support a range of long overdue reforms to make a better life for all Nigerians. A few weeks ago, a group of Nigerians notified the government over the planned nationwide protests beginning from the 1st of August to end on the 10th of August, 2024. The group urged the government to address the rising cost of living and hunger in the land, combat security, insecurity, reduce waste in governance, and release all those still in detention in connection with the NSARS protest movement that took place in 2020. They also called for the protection of farms and farmers, declaration of a state of emergency on education, institution of electoral reforms, establishment of a living wage, and amendment of the constitution to allow for referendums. In a bid to minimize the risk of violent disorder and to innocent life and property, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, held meetings with a wide spectrum of stakeholders, including state governors, traditional rulers, and religious leaders as well as other groups. This is important. Nigeria is a federation, and change is best delivered when all branches of government work together, especially at the local level. President Tinubu called on the organizers to be patient with his government as it works to address Nigeria's challenges. He urged them to understand that there could be no instant fix to the legacy of decay that he had inherited. He said that reforms by his administration were sincere and well thought out and would succeed in the long run at creating a better platform for jobs, prosperity, security, and the stable democracy that Nigeria deserves. Rather than back down, the organizers of the protests promised that the protests would be peaceful, listed out the various venues to be used, and requested the police to provide adequate coverage and protection to ensure peaceful and crisis-free protests. However, contrary to their promise, some of the protesters unleashed violence and turmoil in some parts of the country with wanton destruction of properties and bloodshed leading to the loss of lives. As is common in many parts of the world, the line between legitimate protests as a fundamental pillar of democracy and criminal damage, thuggery, and violent disorder can quickly be crossed. In the national broadcast on Sunday, 4th August 2024, the President expressed pain over the loss of lives, the, the destruction of public prop uh, facilities, and the wanton looting of supermarkets and shops in some states. 
The president commiserated with the families and relations of those who had lost their lives in the protests. He urged protesters and organizers to suspend any further protests and create room for dialogue. He warned that those who broke the law would be made to face the full force of the law. President Tinubu also used the broadcast to highlight some of the measures being taken by his administration to address the concerns of Nigerians and make life better for everyone. I will shed light on some of these measures. Beginning with the removal of fuel subsidies and abolition of multiple foreign exchange system. For decades, our economy has been anemic. Our population is young, dynamic, and vibrant, and Nigeria has abundant resources. But weak administration and policy misalignments that have stunted the country's growth and uh, have stunted the country's growth and potential. Just over a year ago, we reached a point where we could no longer afford to continue the use of temporary solutions to solve long-term problems for the sake of the present and our unborn generations. Consequently, Mr. President took the painful yet necessary decision to remove fuel subsidies and abolish multiple foreign exchange systems, which together with the architecture that they supported had constituted a noose around the economic neck of our nation and held back our prospects for rapid development and progress. These actions blocked the greed and the profits that smugglers and rent seekers made. They also blocked the undue subsidies we had effectively extended to our neighboring countries to the detriment, detriment of our people. The bold decisions that President Tinubu took with the full support of experts, economists, and many of our friends abroad became necessary to reverse decades of economic mismanagement and failure. In the past 14 months, the federal government has made significant strides in building the foundation to the econ of the economy to carry the country into a future of plenty and abundance. On the fiscal side, aggregate government revenues have more than doubled, hitting over 9.1 trillion naira in the first half of 2024 compared to the first half of 2023. And this was due to deliberate and concerted efforts at blocking leakages, introducing autom automation, and mobilizing funding creatively without additional burden to the people. Consequently, productivity is gradually increasing in the non-oil sector, reaching new levels and taking advantage of the opportunities in the current economic ambience. Coming from a place where our country spent 97% of all our revenue on debt servicing, we've been able to reduce that to 68% in the last 13 months. The federal government has also cleared legitimate outstanding foreign exchange obligations of about 5 billion without any adverse impact on her programs. This has given us more financial freedom and the room to spend more money on our citizens to fund essential social services like education and health care. It has also led to our state and local governments receiving the highest allocations ever in our country's history from the Federation account. The government has also embarked on major infrastructure projects across the country. We're working to complete inherited projects critical to our economic prosperity, including roads, bridges, railway, power, and oil and gas developments. Notably, the lagos Calabar Coastal Highway, the Sokoto-Badagri Highway projects will open 
16 connecting states, creating thousands of jobs and boosting economic output through trade, tourism, and cultural integration. Uh, once declining...